lecture. This is uh, Dr. Tokawi. I'm currently pain management fellow. And today um, I'm going to talk to you about chronic lower back pain. First of all, um, I want to say that um, by any means, I'm not here to recommend um, one treatment for you versus other. Um, and uh, this is just to give you an overview to the, to the burden of the disease, uh, the risk factors, and what are the available treatment. And by the end of the day, you should go to a specialist um, to assess you um, and um, recommend um, a specific treatment for you. My goal by the end of this lecture that you will appreciate the burden of low back pain um, in, in, in your family, in, in your society, and know a little bit about the uh, common causes of um, back pain and when you should seek specialist care and what are the available treatment modalities and how to prevent back pain and maintain good back hygiene. So I gave this lecture um, recently to um, local community on the Bay Area in California. And I used to ask the audience to um, answer a few questions just to get an idea um, about um, the, the burden of this problem uh, where I'm, I'm talking about. So there were um, about 100 uh, um, attendants to the lecture and um, almost um, around 25 responded to the, uh, answer the questions. Um, so the first question I asked them, do you have or had chronic uh, lower back pain? And the definition of chronic here, uh, continuous uh, lower back pain more than three months. And as you can see, almost two thirds, they answered yes. Then I asked them, did you ever had a back surgery? 14% um, they said um, yes, which translate to about three out of the 25 people who responded to this question. Then I asked them, are you aware of the presence of a specialist um, doctor um, pain physician and almost two quarters uh, they were uh, not aware about this speciality. So let me start by saying this is a big problem. Um, almost 100 million Americans affected by this um, disease, chronic lower back pain. It is far more common than heart disease, diabetes, and cancer if you combine them all together. And the U.S. spend more than $600 billion per year as a direct and indirect medical expenses for this disease. Almost 80% of adults will experience low back pain at some point during their life. So it's the most common cause of job-related disability and absence and the leading contributor to missing from um, uh, work days. So this table actually very nicely summarizes how big the burden of this uh, uh, disease. So this is a huge um, um, international study that um, looked at uh, multiple diseases and ranked them by how common they are worldwide. So the prevalence, which means how common this disease exists in females in 1990, um, chronic lower back pain ranked number 16. 
and continued to rank the same even up to 2017. In Maine, it's about the same, but what is striking here that chronic lower back pain is number one cause of years lived with disability in both genders throughout the last three decades, which can tell you that despite all the improvement and the management that we have, chronic lower back pain is still the most common cause of years lived with disability. So it's not uncommon to have people with chronic lower back pain, and it's, it's a big problem to the patient, to the family, to the society. Another large survey uh, showed that more than a quarter of adults uh, reported experiencing lower back pain during the past three months. And when I showed you the first slide, at least the people who attended my class, uh, my lecture, um, almost two thirds, they reported uh, chronic lower back pain. In the United States, just over 8% of population has severe lower back pain. So from now on, I want you to focus on this category. If, if the pain lasts for four weeks or less, this is acute. More than four weeks, but less, but less than uh, uh, three months, this is subacute. When it hit the three month and above, this is chronic. Um, despite that, the good news that most uh, uh, low back pain will resolve in time. 80% of acute back pain will resolve within one month and about 90% resolve in about three months. So let me talk about um, some uh, relevant anatomy to help you understand um, the causes and, of the, and the treatment. So your back is formed by bones. We all know that. Muscles, nerves, and tissue. The bones of the back, they are very unique. They're called vertebrae. This is a vertebrae right here. Which together, they form the spinal column. And the vertebrae are stacked on top of each other to form the, uh, the, the vertebral column. The spinal cord, right there, uh, passes through the opening of, in the back of the vertebrae and uh, a small nerve called nerve roots, these are the nerve roots right there, um, it, uh, exit from the spinal cord passing through um, the, uh, the vertebrae through what we call it the transverse foramen. And um, the nerve root, that run to the lower back uh, and the legs collectively uh, make what it's called the cauda equina. Um, the spaces between the, the, the vertebrae are maintained by round, rubbery pads called the intervertebral disc. Uh, the intervertebral disc uh, act like a shock absorbance throughout the spinal column to caution the bones as the body moves. Here is another important st structure called the facet joint. The facet joint, together with the disc, they constitute the tripod connection between uh, each vertebral body. The vertebrae are held together by uh, ligaments. We have a bunch of ligaments right there. So. Your vertebral uh, uh, column consists of four main regions, the cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral. For the purpose of this lecture, chronic lower back pain, we are focusing and interested in the lumbar um, segment, which right there, the lower uh, uh, five vertebrae. So let's talk about some causes of back pain. Most people, up to 80%, they have what the doctors call nonspecific low back pain, which means that the pain is not clearly caused by a specific disease, abnormality, or serious injury. The classic story 
patient will report um, um, throwing out their back, meaning they suddenly have a, a sudden onset of um, uh, acute back pain following physical activity, like lifting a heavy object, uh, uh, shoveling, and, or, or bending. Uh, this type of pain most often uh, rep uh, represent a strain to the muscles or the ligaments of the back, but it can be severe. Uh, less commonly, um, the remaining 20% uh, will be divided between what we call them mechanical low back pain and non-mechanical low back pain. Um, mechanical, they are more common, and for example, um, discs prolapse or discopathy, facet joint or arthritis, uh, spondylolithiasis, uh, spinal stenosis, osteoporosis, fractures, they are all under the mechanical low back pain. While uh, very, very rare, but serious enough, um, you have other causes like metastatic cancer, um, infection, and um, some vascular problems that can radiate to the back. So again, this is a cross section um, to the vertebrae. Um, this is the disc. And inside the disc, there is a structure called the nucleus uh, bulbosus. And as you see, there is uh, uh, annulus uh, uh, fibrous uh, around the nucleus bulbosus. So what happened that this disc, uh, it can get degenerated and it can herniate. So when it herniates and move, it will compress the nerve root and cause pain and sometimes cause something called sciatica. Um, here you have uh, a ligament called ligamentum flavum, um, which sometimes get also hypertrophied and cause compression in the nerve uh, structure. And these are the lamina, and uh, this is the facet joint uh, again. So again, uh, um, most likely non-specific pain, but um, mechanical causes came next. And um, here we have like a compression fracture, a herniated disc, and a, a degenerative uh, disc disease. So the, when we say degenerative disc disease, over time, um, normal wear and tear can lead to degenerative disc disease. Um, and this, the development of um, what happened that uh, the disc um, will have some small cracks and tears and lose the fluid in the disc. Uh, this can lead to changes in the neighbor, neighboring spinal vertebrae, in, uh, including formation of bone spurs or uh, uh, bone uh, overgrowth. Um, so, mainly this is an aging problem, unfortunately. Um, while the changes uh, in the disc can cause uh, back pain, there are many uh, older people with degenerative disc disease who have no symptoms. So, you might have this degenerative disc disease, but you don't have um, uh, symptoms, and actually this is the majority of the cases. But what happened that when the disc herniate, which means a uh, bulge, uh, it can uh, 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 press on the nerve uh, root and, and cause uh, back pain and sometimes what we refer to as uh, sciatica, which basically a pain that extends down the back of the leg. So sciatica is a, actually a type of uh, a radicular pathy. It occurs when one of the five spinal nerve roots uh, um, get irritated. And, and typically, the patient will describe a sharp or burning pain that extends down uh, the back of, or the side of the thigh and may reach as far as the foot or the ankle. Um, some patient may report some numbness or tingling sensation and occasionally may have some uh, muscle weakness.
And classically, this type of pain uh, um, uh, exaggerate uh, when the patient cough or sneeze or beard down. Um, osteoarthritis, also another common thing. Um, and if you have um, osteoarthritis somewhere else, like um, on the knee or the shoulder, then um, there is um, a higher chance that you may also have osteoarthritis in your back, and specifically we're talking about the facet joint here. So again, uh, uh, osteoarthritis is a classic thing with aging, but many people, they might have osteoarthritis, but they not necessarily uh, have pain. Uh, lumbar spinal stenosis, another thing, where basically the vertebral canal uh, get narrowed down for multiple reasons, for example, having um, bone spurs, uh, again with osteoarthritis. And again, the good news is that many patients actually they have stenosis and have no symptoms. Uh, but when you have symptoms, classically, the spinal stenosis will cause pain uh, that goes also in their lower legs uh, while the patient walking. And this is why sometimes it gets um, confused with um, uh, the ischemic uh, claudication. This is um, called a neurogenic claudication. So as, as, you, as you saw, um, having a diseased joint or disc uh, not necessarily can cause pain. Um, and this is why and I will talk about that in the next slides, that uh, we should not treat imaging. We should treat the patient symptoms, complain. Um, because many times we uh, do like scan the back or do an X-ray or do an MRI, we will find a pathology, but it's not necessarily causing symptoms. So let's talk about some risk factors for back pain. Again, Age, unfortunately, um, advanced age, um, as you saw, can cause some um, uh, changes in the bone, including um, osteoporosis. And um, this is why it's important for elderly to make sure they don't have osteoporosis, either take vitamin uh, calcium or check your vitamin D. Um, also, advanced age can cause some degenerative uh, disc disease, as I showed you before, and, and sometimes uh, spinal uh, stenosis. So this is an unavoidable uh, risk factor, basically. Fitness level, uh, back pain is more common among people who are not physically fit. True. Why? Because weak back and abdominal muscles may not properly support the spine. So you want your help? You want to help your back by having uh, a, a strong muscles that uh, carry the weight. Um, other uh, important things in people who uh, go out and exercise a lot after being inactive all the week, this might trigger a pain painful back injury uh, in these people. This is why um, uh, we recommend that you um, do a consistent, even if it's a small uh, uh, few, few minutes, but consistent exercise. And when you increase your exercise, increase that uh, gradually. Pregnancy, unfortunately, this is true. Uh, carrying a weight um, will uh, put a lot of uh, uh, burden in your lower back. And it is uh, very common pregnant toward the end of their pregnancy uh, to have uh, lower back pain and sometimes it lasts for a few months uh, after uh, delivery. Obesity, it's a common sense. Um, you're, you're adding more burden in your back. Um, so um, sometimes also uh, genetics, specifically here we have a disease called ankylosing spondylitis. Um, which is some sort of, uh, uh, think about it, that your back is fused, uh, and this is, uh, you have less um, 
mobility and it it exacerb it it trigger uh, chronic uh, back pain occupational risk factors uh, heavy lifting pushing pulling uh, all are risk factors um, also inactive job or 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 disc job may also lead to um, pain especially if you have a poor posture or sit all the day in a chair with inadequate back support um, mental health factors people who has a lot of anxiety depression stress they also um, uh, put them at risk for uh, chronic back pain uh, backpack overload I uh, hear I mentioned the example of children but it's true at any age and um, the general rule um, for pediatric for, for, for children that the back uh, the backpack should not uh, exceed 15 to 20 percent of the child's uh, body weight but again this is true even for uh, older uh, people here let's talk about um, uh, what we uh, do and might do uh, to diagnose pain so first um, the first step and the most important step is uh, taking a comprehensive history from the patient and doing a thorough physical examination and you will hear me uh, talking about uh, in the next slide something called the red flags basically we want to um, rule out or in uh, the red flags so we'll ask the patient about when the pain started where is the pain how severe it is any other associated um, uh, symptoms and um, it's not uncommon to um, when you go to your doctor to answer a few questionnaires or questions that um, basically tend to uh, assess some psychological aspect about depression and anxiety pain catastrophizing and then we'll ask the patient about any surgery history medication and do a thorough uh, 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 physical examination that um, definitely should include a neurological tests and look for uh, numbness weakness uh, reflexes to help us um, diagnose the cause and identify the level of the uh, herniated disc so here are the the, the red flags uh, and basically the red flags um, start with age extreme ages um, and um, if you have pain uh, that's radiating going somewhere else like thoracic pain pain going to the to the thigh to the leg if you have a history of carcinoma using steroid HIV uh, or you are you are losing weight you have neurological symptoms um, and if your pain indicate a nerve root problem for example you have a unilateral leg pain uh, radiating pain, uh, numbness, uh, prosthesia, uh, and um, tingling sensation, and uh, some something in the examination called the straight leg rising test uh, that uh, trigger uh, shooting pain. Um, here is another thing that sometimes we refer to as um, yellow flags. Yellow flags. Um, tend to predict long-term disability in patients with chronic low back pain. So for example, people who has an anxiety, depression, or behavioral um, um, uh, abnormalities, or, uh, or, or you know, certain beliefs, this is why we, we do the uh, pain catastrophizing uh, questions, uh, having some social issues like sexual abuse, physical abuse, substance abuse, or uh, having an uh, unhealthy uh, work environment like they tend to do a lot of heavy lifting um, they don't have a good job uh, uh, poor job uh, satisfaction and this is why again when you go to a pain physician for example it's not uncommon to uh, uh, to answer uh, some of the questions that um, indicate if you have um, yellow flags 
So back to the red flags. So for example, um, when I have a patient, extreme age, um, I might think about, oh, did this patient have a fracture or cancer? And this is why I might uh, order some um, uh, specific uh, workup to rule out or in that. If, if you have a, a fever that may indicate, for example, infection, uh, trauma may indicate fracture. Um, if you have uh, uh, weakness, difficulty urinating, uh, 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 fecal incontinence, that may indicate a cauda equina syndrome. Uh, losing weight might, might like a hint for a cancer or something like that, history of osteoporosis, a fracture. So this is why it's very important to take a thorough uh, history and answer all these questions and even tell your doctor this information uh, and, and think about all this that might consider as a red flag. So again, um, uh, joint guidelines uh, from the American College of Physicians and the American Pain Society ex explicitly recommended that clinicians should not routinely obtain imaging or other diagnostic tests in patients with nonspecific low back pain. Again, we look for red flags. So here are some indications for diagnostic imaging. For example, if you have a suspicion of, of cancer, metastasis, infection, um, your examination and history indicate something that might uh, 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 like a cauda equina. Um, furthermore, if, if the patient um, exceeds three months, if the patient tried different therapy and nothing is working, if you are uh, suspecting a fracture, if, if your um, examination indicates that the patient might have a radiculopathy or a spinal stenosis, these are common indications to, to order some sort of imaging. So, a simple image, um, cheap, uh, easy to be done, the x-ray. But unfortunately, as you see, the x-ray only show you the bones and not in a good quality, actually. So, if, if you are going for surgery, or if you don't have a, a clear diagnosis, then X-ray uh, per se uh, might not be uh, enough. But it can show something like fracture, very obvious here, and like here, for example, spondylolithiasis, where this uh, vertebrae slide over the other vertebrae. Here is like uh, the, the osteophyte with osteoporosis, and here is a CT scan. It shows you better visualization. It can show you, like, for example, uh, a cancer here, for example, another uh, bony overgrowth here. And it can show you some narrowing of the intervertebral disc that may suggest some uh, discogenic disease. Uh, here is another thing we um, sometimes do, the myelograph, which basically we inject dye uh, in the in the uh, intrathecal space in the spinal canal to uh, look and we see the spread and look if there is any narrowing or any indication for uh, uh, disease. MRI by far is the, is the best modality especially when we want to see soft tissue and uh, like ligaments uh, and so for example here is some narrowing uh, of, the, of the spinal canal and again, uh, if you have some red flags, then uh, your physician might uh, order an MRI. Uh, Electro-diagnostic, uh, like EMG, EP, sometimes uh, done uh, to diagnose uh, uh, nerve conduction uh, uh, abnormalities. Let's briefly talk about management. Again, um, I did this survey, um, again, um, almost 25 respondents, and I asked them, if you ever have or had chronic back pain, which of the following managements did you try? Again, this is in the Bay Area, so it might not be reflective 
for other uh, uh, places. So here, for example, uh, people uh, can have an access to to everything, almost everything they people uh, choose. Um, but you might go somewhere else then where you don't have, for example, uh, chiropractic therapy, you don't have acupuncture, you don't necessarily have a physiotherapy, you don't have a pain physician. So it might not be um, uh, uh, generalized to other places. But as you can see, um, people tried uh, surgery, epidural injection, um, uh, four, four, four persons can be uh, almost like two people uh, had uh, spine stimulator. Here, like 12%, uh, almost equal to six people who tried acupuncture and cryo, um, cryopractic therapy, probably a couple of people right there. Um, fortunately, not too many people using a lot of opioid, but um, as you may hear or uh, know, opioid becoming more of an epidemic uh, uh, problem and more and more people using opioid. So generally speaking, um, um, when you have a back pain, uh, again, we're talking about chronic back pain, which means uh, more than 12 weeks. The general approach always starts simple and conservative. Um, uh, treatment. And I will, I will go over them uh, in few. Rarely you may need uh, invasive um, procedure or, or, or surgery. And um, basically we would like to think about them as the last resort. So start by simple things like hot packs. Uh, they can help with uh, pain relief, especially if you have some sort of um, muscle spasm going with the pain, which is not uncommon. Um, activity, the old school, the old thought used to think, people used to think, recommend that, oh, you have a, a acute back pain, you should have a bed rest. But this turns out not to be true. Uh, uh, actually, uh, individuals should begin stretching exercise and try to resume uh, normal daily ex activities as soon as possible, but avoid uh, um, uh, movement that uh, aggravate uh, pain. Uh, indeed, there is a strong evidence shows that person who continue their activity without bed rest following onset of low back pain appeared to have better back flexibility than those who rested in bed for weeks. Studies suggested that bed rest alone may make back pain worse and can lead to secondary complications such as depression, decreased muscle tone, and blood clots. So here come the strengthening exercises, meaning uh, uh, maintaining and building back muscle strength. Um, and and and. People also talk about yoga here, for example. Uh, physiotherapy, it's not uncommon, and, and maybe people might benefit from that. Um, and the whole, again, the whole idea to strengthen your uh, core muscle uh, uh, groups. Uh, spinal uh, manipulation or uh, mobilization, also known as uh, uh, cryotherapy, uh, where basically um, you go to a cryopractic uh, uh, specialist and, and they do uh, some uh, maneuver. Um, there is no uh, uh, enough evidence um, to support uh, the benefit of cryopractic uh, uh, care in acute or subacute uh, low back pain, but again, some people uh, might benefit from that. Uh, acupuncture. It's not available everywhere, but um, there are actually a growing evidence that um, shows that uh, it can be as equal as uh, psychological or physiotherapy. And basically, it involves the insertion of thin needles into precise points throughout the body. And the thought behind that, it works 
by increasing uh, um, endorphin level, uh, which is think about it as a morphine inside your body, uh, in the central nervous system and turning down uh, uh, inflammation. Um, biofeedback is a, it's a, it's a modality of therapy that involves uh, attachment of electrode to the skin and the use of electrography ma uh, machine that allow people to uh, become aware of and self-regulate their breathing, muscle tension, heart rate, and uh, skin to pressure. And also, there is no enough evidence uh, to support or, uh, uh, this uh, modality in uh, uh, low back pain. TENS, uh, it's a very popular uh, device, which basically involves, um, it's a small uh, battery-powered uh, device that consists of electrodes placed on the back on the skin over the painful area and generate electrical impulses. Again, we have a mixed result about that. Some people benefit from it, some people does not benefit from it. And again, you will hear me talking about uh, uh, no one size fit all. Unfortunately, um, uh, the chronic back pain involves a lot of uh, trial and error. Something might work for you, but doesn't work for other. Uh, and medication, of course, we always should uh, start, if we need, by over-the-counter simple medication like Tylenol, uh, NSAIDs, like ibuprofen. And then if you go to a physician, you will see uh, people prescribe uh, sometimes opioid and sometimes anticonvulsant like gabapentin, or larica, and occasionally uh, antidepressant, even if you don't have depression, but there are certain antidepressants uh, like amitriptyline uh, and Cymbalta. Uh, they have they shown, there are studies shown that uh, they have some benefit on and chronic pain overall, and sometimes um, uh, muscle relaxant as well. Uh, however, um, uh, the new modality of treatment, which proven to be uh, uh, probably the best modality, is to have a multidisciplinary biopsychosocial rehabilitation program. Um, so basically, and this is why if you go to a pain physician, then you will have a comprehensive assessment. And if there is some sort of like psychological component, then you can get some uh, psychologi psych uh, psychological therapy. Um, if there is a biological component, then you go to uh, physiotherapy. Uh, and many times um, you will often end up uh, going to physiotherapy, um, uh, psychological therapy, uh, plus some medication, plus some intervention. They all work together better and give better results. So, here is the, the, the most important question for you. When should I seek specialist help? Again, most of the time, an episode of back pain will get better on its own and does not require extensive testing or treatment. But some people with low back pain should be evaluated and managed by primary care provider or specialist. And I just mentioned for you the red flags. So if you have a new back pain and you are older than 70, uh, if you have a pain that does not go away even at night or when lying down or uh, again exceed the, the, the duration of four weeks or six weeks, uh, if you have weakness, you definitely should go. Um, if you have a weakness or problem with bladder or bowel control, then these are red flags. Um, if your back pain is combined by unexplained fever or weight loss, and if you have a history of cancer or using immunocompromising uh, therapies, you have a history of osteoporosis, uh, corticosteroids, using corticosteroid, or 
there is a, a suspicion that um, um, you have a back pain after you fell down. Uh, or pain that spread to the lower leg, uh, uh, again, uh, think about the red flags and the duration that exceeds four to uh, uh, six weeks. So if you have an episode of back pain that resolved, it is generally not necessary to consult uh, your healthcare provider unless you have a specific question or concern. Um, here, I'm going to... Um, uh, briefly go over uh, uh, a few uh, pain management modalities that um, are interventional pain modalities typically uh, done by a pain physician so for example a trigger point especially if you have a muscle spasm and sometimes we do uh, use a local anesthetic uh, or buttocks or even just a dry needle uh, facet joint uh, injection, and if the local injection proves the symptoms, then you go to the uh, more uh, longer uh, term management called the radiofrequency, where your uh, physician will burn the nerve that supply um, uh, the joint. Uh, epidural steroid injection, um, this is, think about it as a, a short term option. Again, some people benefit to it, some people does not benefit to it, uh, but there are a certain uh, 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 number um, limiting that, so there are a certain number that you should not exceed per year because we think about the dose, how much you get uh, steroid per year. And also, uh, unfortunately, as the disease gets more advanced, you might not uh, experience the same benefit. Uh, other thing uh, we sometimes uh, do call the intrathecal pump. This is uh, typically for failed back uh, surgery syndrome or uh, pain that's caused by a, a cancer. So it's some sort of palliative uh, uh, treatment. And basically it involves uh, inserting a catheter in the intrathecal space and uh, implanting a, a device. Um, typically uh, in the lower abdomen that will continuously give uh, a teeny tiny doses of uh, pain medication in the intrathecal space. Uh, spinal cord stimulator, again, um, it involves uh, placing uh, a couple of leads uh, in the epidural space and then uh, um, a device uh, that generate um, um, some uh, vibration uh, uh, that intend to uh, break the cycle or, or of the pain so basically um, the pain doesn't goes from um, the, the nerve root to the brain again this is something usually uh, preserved uh, for the people who had a failed back uh, surgery syndrome or um, uh, who tried um, something else and nothing is uh, um, working. Uh, other thing that uh, can be done by a pain physician or neurosurgeon or spine surgeon uh, called um, nucleoplasty, or, uh, which basically uh, minimally invasive, transcutaneous. Um, if you have, for example, one level uh, discogenic uh, pain, um, uh, transcutaneously remove the, 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 the disc. Um, there are a lot of studies ongoing now to injecting different materials uh, um, where you, uh, to the disc, um, to help uh, regenerating the disc or to help uh, with the pain, but again, it's still under um, uh, research. Uh, vertebroplasty or kyphoplasty, uh, when you have one uh, um, uh, compressed uh, fracture and basically it involves injection of uh, cement materials or, or, or other materials um, to help the fraction. Um, uh, here is um, another procedure called the mild procedure which is a minimally invasive 
lumbar decompression, um, especially uh, when you have a hypertrophic uh, ligamentum flavum. So it is uh, transcutaneously um, uh, with the X-ray guidance, go all the way and try to uh, trim the, the hypertrophied uh, ligament. Then finally, we have surgery. Um, surgery, um, 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 again, this is just an overview. And, and surgery, um, for example, um, you will hear about something called laminectomy, which basically um, uh, decompression uh, where um, the surgeon perform, uh, if you have a spinal stenosis, uh, causing narrowing of the spinal canal and causing pain, numbness, and weakness. Um, so the surgeon will remove the lamina or the bone of the some bone of the vertebrae um, and and relieve the compression. Um, discectomy, uh, basically removing the disc. Um, in cases where it uh, herniate or uh, passing on the nerve root or in the spinal cord. And there is what's called also the microdiscectomy, which is basically um, a, a, a modality of discectomy. Uh, spinal uh, fusion um, used to strengthen the spine and prevent painful movement in people with degenerative disc uh, disease or spinodiathesis. So the spinal disc between two uh, or more vertebrae re get removed and um, the adjacent vertebrae uh, uh, fused using uh, metallic uh, 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 metal devices uh, like uh, uh, rules and screws. The spinal effusion may result in uh, some uh, lose of flexibility in the spine and require a long uh, recovery period to allow the bone graft to grow and fuse the vertebrae together. Spinal fusion has been associated with an acceleration of uh, disc degeneration at adjacent level of the spine. And finally, uh, artificial uh, disc uh, replacement. Uh, let's talk about prevention. So, recurring back pain result from improper body mechanics is often preventable by avoiding movements that uh, uh, jolt or strain the back and maintaining correct posture and avoiding lifting uh, objectives. Uh, many work-related injuries are caused by uh, or, or, or exaggerated by stressors such as heavy lifting, uh, uh, contract stress, uh, vibration, repetitive movement, uh, related to posture, um, and, and I'm going to talk about this. So for example, uh, lifting. So this lift, uh, this picture, uh, if you think about it, uh, it can have a high incidence of back injuries um, because you're basically using your back muscles to, to lift. While well, this is the correct uh, or proper lifting technique, uh, you use uh, uh, good body mechanics to protect your spine. So when lifting, squat and keep the weight close to your body and use your thigh muscle uh, for power. Uh, the use of lumbar uh, uh, support uh, in the form of wide elastic bands that can be uh, tightened to provide support to the lower back and abdominal muscle to prevent low back pain remain controversial. Um, such support widely used uh, despite the lack of evidence, but I know many people still like to use it, but there is a lack of evidence um, uh, uh, that this actually help. Indeed, multiple studies have determined that the use of lumbar support provides no benefit in terms of preventing and treating back pain. Furthermore, some caution uh, is advised uh, given that wearing a support belt 
may actually lead to or exaggerate back pain by causing back muscles to weaken from uh, lack of use. So some recommendation here um, to keep your back healthy. Um, following any period of prolonged inactivity, a regimen of low impact exercise is advised. Speed, walking, swimming, uh, stationary bike ride uh, for about 30 minutes daily can increase muscle strength and flexibility. Yoga also can help uh, uh, stretch and uh, strengthen muscles and improve posture. Always stretch before exercise or other sternness uh, physical activity. Do not slouch uh, when uh, standing or uh, sitting. The lower back can support a person weight most easily when the curvature is reduced when standing keep your weight balanced on your feet at home or work make sure work uh, services are at a comfortable uh, uh, height sit in a chair with a good lumbar support and proper position and height for the task keep shoulders back uh, switch sitting position often and periodically walk around the office or gently stretch muscle to relieve tension. A pillow or rolled up towel placed behind the small uh, um, of the back can provide some lumbar support. During prolonged period of uh, sitting, elevate feet on a low stool or a, a stack of uh, uh, books, for example. Again, I want you to think about your back. So this is how it should be. It should be straight, and this is the normal curvature. So anything you do, whether you are sitting, you are walking, you are lifting, think about maintaining this um, um, uh, healthy uh, posture. Wear comfortable low heel shoes. Um, sleep on one side with knees drawn up in a fetal position can help open up the joints in the spine and relieve pressure by reducing the curvature of the spine. Always sleep on a firm surface. Do not try to lift objects that are too heavy. Lift from the knees, pull the stomach muscle in and keep head down and in line with the straight back. When lifting, keep object close to the body as I showed you in the previous picture. Maintain proper nutrition and diet to reduce and prevent exercise weight gain, especially weight around the uh, uh, waistline uh, that uh, taxes lower body muscle. A diet with sufficient dietary intake of calcium, phosphate, and vitamin D help to promote new bone growth. Quit smoking. Smoking actually reduces uh, blood flow to the lower spine, which can contribute to uh, spinal disc degeneration. Smoking also increases the risk of osteoporosis and uh, impedes healing. Um, also, coughing due to smoking uh, also can cause back pain. Indeed, if you go to many surgeons, they will ask you and they need to make sure that you quit smoking before surgery to help um, uh, with uh, healing. Um, here are some suggested exercises called uh, the McGill uh, uh, Peg uh, 3 Back Exercise. And the whole idea to strengthen the core muscles. So these are three exercises. The first one, and uh, you might um, go to YouTube and try to watch a video if you cannot get this. The first one called the, the curl up uh, exercise. Basically, uh, this is your position. Then you uh, extend uh, and, and flex your um, uh, neck. The second one called the uh, bird dog exercise. This is how you sit. Then you extend your, um, your arm and your uh, uh, leg this way to strengthen 
your lower back muscles. Then the side uh, bride exercise, again, uh, to do some pushing uh, to strengthen your um, uh, core uh, muscles. Uh, I will wrap up with giving you some take-home messages. So again, uh, a, a chronic low back pain has tremendous impact on the individual, their family, and society. Most lower back pain will resolve in time. Actually, 80% of acute back pain uh, resolve in one month. Chronic low back pain, like uh, 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 chronic pain in general, can cause uh, changes throughout the nervous system and uh, behave like a disease in its own right. Um, assessment required a detailed history and physical examination to rule out red flags. For most mechanical low back pain, self-care for the first four weeks, then conservative treatment uh, for uh, the, ne the, the next four weeks, uh, then uh, maybe you need um, to have a specialist care. Keep moving. Complete bed rest is no longer uh, recommended. If pain persists, then consider referral to a specialty care. Correct diagnosis, always the first key for successful treatment. Multidisciplinary care gives the best result. One size, again, one size does not fit all. The treatment that worked for another patient might not work for you. Some treatment may take time to work and may even not work. Keep your back healthy. Uh, here, is, um, here are some uh, of my references, and uh, thank you for uh, watching.